Hi, this is Dave from Technol. Just going to give a brief overview of Order Controller and how it integrates with the Microlab and the D3000. It's a very versatile software that allows you to create orders locally, receive orders remotely from kiosks, um, archive and reprint orders, and allows a variety of editing and um, job splitting. When we first set up the order controller, we go into new order, you can see we supply you with all the sort of default photo sizes. This one's been pre-configured for a D700 setup, so it could be for a single one or for a micro lab. You can see there's all the standard sizes plus some panoramics and some square sizes. The features inside this part of the software, you'll be able to change it from auto printing to split printing. So the software can automatically increase the speed of printing by splitting the order over two, three, four printers. When you've chosen the size of the print that you want, so in this case I'm going to use 6x4, we can then go looking for our images. So we have a choice of Depoff, which we can go looking at for a kiosk digital print order format file. We can import an image from a scanner, an Epson scanner. We can search by file name or by thumbnail. So I'm going to go into the thumbnail view. So now we're in the register image. We can look for them locally on the desktop or the C drive, but in this case, I'm going to look on the network drive that I've set up. So there's my images. Now I can control click individual ones, single click, or I can select all. So in this instance, I'm going to select all and register them. If you want to see the pictures in a larger preview, you can just slide the slider bar and get a better look. You can also double click as well if you want to see full size image. Once you're happy with your selections, you can choose from multiple locations and register them. Press confirm. And then you just confirm that you're choosing the right size that you want to print. So again, I'm just going to use 6x4 gloss. To register and modify. Now, depending on your settings, which I'll show you shortly, the order will either hold in the order list or start. But in this case, I've got it set up so that it just automatically starts. So this is the order verification screen. So in here, you can do everything that you need to do. You can crop images, you can move them around, you can change colors. So you've got your yellow, magenta, cyan, and density adjustments at the bottom. So you can just add and remove that. And then you can also adjust the image within the constraints of the picture so you don't get any white areas inside, just on this screen. If we go into the paintbrush for double click, we're offered a lot more options. So inside here, we have free movement of the picture. So we could zoom it in, zoom it out, whatever we want to do with it, and place it just where we want. We can also reset using the toggles on the left hand side. So yeah, you also have minor rotation and zoom and then obviously all your normal editing features, so sharpness, brightness, contrast. You can use the color processing to change to black and white. There's different shades of black and white. There's also CPU as well. The Epson auto correction, they've spent a lot of time developing. Um, it enables you to really sort of punch up the prints and optimize them for inkjet. So you get that, what the pictures look like on the phone screen, really, what people are asking for a lot these days. So you can turn them on by order or individual picture. But as you can see, it really punches up the picture and makes it look just like people would get on their tablets and phones. Right, so when you're happy with your editing, you just press confirm, and then you can go through and you can edit all the rest of your pictures. You can change the quantities as well, so you can add them up, minus, plus. And if you wanted to do a double set, you could change the first one to two, and then down the bottom here, we have a copy. So we can change the number of copies and correction values, or both together. 
So if I just do copies only, press copy, you can see now all the prints in that two images order. Once I'm happy with that, I can then press confirm. My order will now be on the way. So on the main screen now, you can see my order has dropped in. As long as there's an available printer, it would start. Uh, it would tell you how many prints need to be printed, and it would give you a rough delivery time based on timings that we put in for each print. And off it will go and be happy. And that's basically how to make prints if you were ordering locally. You can pause an order, say if you needed to produce an urgent ID print and you had a lot of prints going through, say a hundred order or a couple of hundred, you could highlight the order and then you could pause the order down the bottom. And then you would be able to free up an order below, jump above it, print the single and then continue with your long order afterwards. So the other features and options on the order controller, the summary tab, will give you a full breakdown day by day of all the different channels basically that you've ordered. So you'll be able to see how many you printed of 6x4 Glossy, how many 8x12s, how many passports if you set up a passport only channel. It can help you with reporting, etc. Printer control is something we can go through on another day, but that allows you to basically run things like cleans, um, nozzle checks, and check things like print counts, ink levels, anything else to do with the printer. So the settings tab is where we can customize the software for you. So the print settings, we can set the order priority to process and priority, order printable data or time received. So it can save everything in the order it came in, or it can save it in the order that it can print currently with what paper's loaded or processing priority basically moves any order you release to the top so every order is held until you begin the order you want so the save the order option is the archive you can set how long you want to set that for um, so you can recall an order quickly without having to go find the images again and everything else uh, the index we can add your logo to the indexes Exporting the image if you need to send somebody an email, we can set a folder for that. And also, we can use Windows CD DVD burner to burn the images onto a CD or DVD. In the application settings, uh, we can change the amount of steps that you correct per click on the image verification screens. So, if you want a larger jump when you're using the density or color adjustments, we can change that there or we can make it smaller. And on this part, you can see all the available printers that are there. So you can have D700s multiple, you can have Epson large format printers registered here, and D3000. The monitored folders is for the kiosks. So if you have a DPOF format kiosk, we can add a folder here that it monitors and it will automatically pull your orders in, set the size, the quantities, and everything. All you have to do is press go and verify the pictures. Down the bottom, we have the ordering. So generally, we leave it as file name ascending for the uh, image sorting. Uh, image selection method, we generally use thumbnail, so you can see the pictures, but you can have file name as well if you know the image names that you want to print. The scanners is compatible scanner, an Epson scanner. And DPOF is if you have the kiosk and you want to manually pull orders across, as well as having the feature of the automatic printing. External applications is just shortcuts. So if we add those, you can quickly open Photoshop or Lightroom or your editing software of choice. Also in the settings, we have edit preset list. Now this is all your channels. So like I said, we have a default setup when we install, but in here we can create up to 300 preset channels. So these can be normal size or we can also force images onto different size papers so if you need a five by seven and it's a single one and it'd be quicker to print a five by seven on six inch paper then we could easily force that through as a five by seven on six inch to do that would be really quick we can do five by seven on six inch 
and then it would be glossy. So we need to specify the output paper, which will be a six by seven. And the paper size would be a five by seven. And then you would just need to trim off the white area there. I saved that as a preset and registered it. That is now an option for me to print on in the software. We can also add custom sizes and real size. So it gives us the option We also have the option to add borders, so we can add any size. They've got some default sizes, but we can customize the size of the borders. We can color the borders, and we can also change the layout. So if you want the image to fit the paper, we can. If you want it to crop it, we can. Or we can use actual size. Now, actual size is really handy if you're printing things like lockets. Um, so you were doing a one centimeter by one centimeter image you've done on Photoshop. If you set a six by four actual size and put the image in, it would give you a one by one locket in the middle of a six by four. It could save a lot of time with editing and trimming and things like that. The initial correction value, so this can be your custom setting. So if you feel the machine you needs to be slightly brighter, slightly sharper, uh, you can change the presets there and it'll apply it to that channel only or to all channels. So you might have a customer who requires plus five sharpness. You can make them their own channels with the sharpness in, so you don't have to add it every time they come in. Back printing is only available on D3000, so you can have a copyright uh, along with the image number, etc. Easy to find the images again if you want to reprint. The ICC profiles are all set by us. Um, we could import new ones if they ever needed to, if new papers come out. But yeah, you just set them here and the machine will print consistently every time. And that's an overview of the channels. Last thing I want to show you is the edit image correction values. So inside here, we can have the default. Say like you want to have a couple of sharpness and brightness on all your prints. You can set that and it will apply it to everything. If you said film, like we've got set up here, and you believe that the film could do with a little bit of contrast and some saturation, then when you apply this correction to a channel, then it will do that for you straight away. So you don't have to edit every time and add the saturation and the contrast. So you can have so many of these channels set up for custom customers or for different environments, so studio photography or just general day-to-day -day customer use. And that's an overview of all the software there. If you give us a call, be happy to talk through any of the features and how we could customize it for your workflow.